It's football and it's this week. Sorry, I just wanted to clarify just in case you didn't get it from, you know, from this and the whole. Yo guys, it's your boy has finally descended back into no trim near in here. Welcome to FTW. This, of course, is the series where I bring to you the best and more frequently the worst of what football has to offer online and on social media during the course of the week. And oh, what's that I see? No, you in the back, Dimitri. Is that a further six people watching this video with you? Groups are officially done four. It's the end of the seven aside scene as we know it. You're about to have your centre back confiscated. I don't make the rules. Listen, it's six only. You'd probably have more entertainment in your forcefully shut down seven aside game than at England though. And that's because the national side offered up a pretty dismal 1-0 victory over Iceland before a disappointingly dull 0-0 draw against Denmark. And this of course being in the UEFA Nations League. For a start, the competition itself is just way too confusing. So to qualify, if you take three groups, yeah, with the best team and then promote them, okay, right, to, to where? If you then divide by the coefficient, carry the isosceles triangle before putting into bracket the group number they happen to be in. Secondly, the players don't even know the tactics they've been sent on to deliver. And thirdly, it's just so boring watching the England team right now. We've got three centre-backs and three holding midfielders playing. There's all lives matter supporters that aren't even that defensive. I'd have more fun watching paint dry. I would find more entertainment in licking a seat on the Bakerloo line. I would discover more enjoyment in listening to Jeremy Lynch talk about his V12 engine in his Audi R8. I don't care about your past or your history. Gareth Southgate may have the waistcoat, but it doesn't matter when it's all a waste of my time. We had the dreams, we had the vibes, but Gaza doesn't know what he's talking about. This could be the end of the road. It's time to go! We scored one goal in the international break and it came against a team that was randomly playing one winger just for the sake of it. The squad scored more off the pitch. What, what are you coming to the hotel for? What do you think? What does she want? Yeah, what's your thing, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Young England debutants Mason Greenwood and Phil Foden were sent home from international duties this week after trying to smuggle Icelandic girls into their hotel room. Ever since I saw this picture, I knew that Foden would be the player type. What are you coming to the hotel for? If there's ever some sort of footballing James Bond crossover, I don't want to see these two anywhere near it. You're attempting to be secretive and getting caught out on every single social media available. I was half expecting these girls to post something on Bebo. I know we're struggling for goals, but they're just taking scoring away from home far too seriously. As you can imagine, the social media backlash has been pretty extensive, but Iceland, the supermarket, were unwilling to take any sort of responsibility. It is at least good that Jack Grealish is having some sort of positive impact on the squad these days. I can only imagine the scenes. Kyle Walker downstairs trying to get in. Trent Alexander-Arnold asking if anybody in the vicinity has got a banana. Phil Foden waking up to 427 missed calls on his iPhone. I am bricking myself, cannot move. Listen, overall, they're young, okay? They're gonna make stupid decisions and mistakes. It's just one of those things. They'll learn and grow from it. All England players seem to have a scandal. Would Wayne Rooney be where he is if it wasn't for those grandmas? Probably yes, arguably, when I think about it. But what I will say is I'm not a massive fan of people attacking Phil Foden's girlfriend for staying with him. He's in the wrong. He's got a kid at home and he's doing this on his international duty. She can choose to act how she likes, realistically. She's not the villain here. The footballing charity event, Soccer Aid, also took place this week on ITV. The two teams were massively uneven, given the best on-the-ball player Arsene Wenger has ever seen was on one of them. It's just completely unfair when Jezza Lynch is involved. Back in the day, he was striking fear into Sol Campbell and co when the Invincibles were playing the under-15s. <laughs> He was, however, crunched by ex-Aston Villa, Everton and City midfielder Gareth Barry. Always secretly rated him. But before any of that took place, Yaya Torre was kicked out of the whole thing and not allowed to play because he tried to hire sex workers for other people who were playing. This is possibly the stupidest charity event story I've ever heard. And I watched Man Like Hacks say that other people had no talent merely seven days ago. Anyway, it was a brilliant day for young Philly. He 
got himself a goal. Probably deserving of an actual England call-up now. However, it wasn't as good a day for the young chunks. Missing the vital penalty in the shootout and then getting pied off by Maya Jammer after suggesting he'd pulled her. It may have been a bad day, but he's still a hero for us all. Over in France, and Dejan Lovren scored this on international duty. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he is actually the best defender in the world. It's all well and good doing this, but you let Troy Deeney bumba clot you into 2023. Chelsea officially announced their alternate kit that has the red and blue stripes using the hashtag It's a Chelsea thing, to which Crystal Palace very much had their own response. It's a Housery Award for the Eagles. And speaking of kits, Manchester United dropped their alternate one as well. There's no real surprise that Aaron. And Wan Bissaka looks clinically depressed in it. This honestly could be the worst kit of all time. It's meant to apparently have black and white stripes on the shorts, too. It's intelligent, though, because if the opposition can't see because you've blinded them, then they can't beat you. Either that or they're just trying to be really inclusive for Harry Maguire, given his Mykonos antics. <laughs> Yeah, we're definitely going to win the league. I don't know what you're talking about. West Ham are currently imploding on social media. Given the sale of Grady Diangana to West Brom, their club captain Mark Noble took to the internet to blast them saying he was extremely disappointed. He just is the type to hunt down the board members of West Ham and double foot them, even if they're walking through the Tesco toiletries aisle. The new Prime video documentary based around Tottenham being Spurs all or nothing provided yet another gem this week. In the form of the undercard match you didn't know you needed. Danny Rose versus Jose Mourinho. My man came in talking about wanting more game time, acting like he's prime Maldini. Though, to be fair, as a left back, if the manager started playing a right-footed centre-back in front of me, I'm walking into his office and shaving his head by force. Don't get me wrong, Tanganga was superb there. But if you're willing to chance him instead of giving Danny Rose the game, then the rest of the pecking order must be very dismal. There's wholesome content on on Insta in the form of I Merrick Laporte turning down a comments bot because he's scared about lockdown. However, Bruno Fernandez's latest caption leaves a bit more to be desired, giving a very descriptive football analogy in getting his wife pregnant. I just don't need to know. I don't need to envision that big man. I remember it very well. I put it in the box. There was loose balls everywhere. Bruno, I'm literally giving birth. You pagan. What are you? One Sunderland fan tried to remind Newcastle that their newest recruit Danny Graham had scored more Premier League goals than all of their front three or something. To which Alan Son Maximin replied with this, him shaking hands with the amount of Sunderland fans in the Premier League. <laughs> it's a shithousery award so strong the original guy deleted his whole Twitter account and that is a rarity. There's also the tragic news that YouTube star Troops is leaving Arsenal Fan TV officially. He's moving to New York for a new job opportunity. I could only imagine the damage it may well do to Robbie. That second role Rolls-Royce is not on the way. I guess now at least we can take a little look at some of his best moments. My mum's going her in. Is she mad? <laughs> Hello all and welcome to The Beautiful Game, the segment where we take a look at the poetic and brilliant side of the game that we love. We are back by popular demand for yet more glorious beauty. Pedro! Olha só o que aconteceu, que vac... And that concludes the beautiful game. Over in Italy, a national team manager, Roberto Mangini, confirmed that he'd accidentally left defender Giorgio Chiellini out of the starting 11 because he didn't have his glasses on and was unable to read a provisional lineup that had Chiellini on the bench instead. Elsewhere in the Faroe Islands beat Malta, giving them a first victory in years, thanks to not only three separate players with the same surname, but this unbelievable free kick. Meanwhile, continuing the scandal Scandinavian theme and it was yet another brilliant performance from Erling Haaland. He's truly a generational talent. Who could his inspirations have been? R9? Thierry Henry? No, it's actually, it's Michu. It's me, he actually copied Michu's celebration. How did this even happen? But now, boys and girls, it's time for the FNG transfer roundup. <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, you'll be happy to know that after last week's blunder, we've sacked our researchers here for the HITC Sport Transfer.
for crying out loud, man. Our first story is the impressive Everton capture of James Rodriguez. The Colombian joins a plethora of exciting midfielders, moving to Merseyside and joining Carlo Ancelotti. He had this to say, Up the Duffies. I'm unsure as to why he's such a big fan of the Duffies. Shane's just left for Celtic and the singer hasn't released anything in a while. I guess there'll be more to follow. Reports this week suggest that Barcelona forward Luis Suarez is close to a move to Juventus. It should see an excellent link up between himself and Leonardo Bonucci. And now finally, we head over to politics. Yes, thank you very much. You join us with some breaking news here. As Manchester United forward Marcus Rashford is daring to end child poverty. I'm hearing he's suggesting that children should actually eat. He seems to have forgotten he's a footballer and has no right to talk about anything other than football. Indeed, indeed. And that is all for the news. Over in the world of Gareth Bale, and he's posting about golf again. Are we even surprised at this point? After the incident at the US Open involving Novak Djokovic, Mikel Antonio complained about the diving on offer. Send him off! Send the dirty guys off! We have what seems to be somewhat of a breakdown in communication between two officials here. And finally, over in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> What is actually going on in this episode? Can, can someone please? <laughs> But now it is time for Still Nil Nil, and you guys know the score by now. This is a segment of the show where I bring to you the best of Sunday League and amateur football. And today we've got something quite outstanding. As a forward pretends to make the sound for the referee's whistle to stop the defenders from playing, run through on goal and score. There's no VAR, I just think they let it stand personally. But on to the weird stuff now. After last week's attendance of two, Welsh side Aberystwyth have seen an incredible rise in numbers at the stadium with a total of seven people peering over the same wall. Over in South America, we've got whatever this is. I hope he's sponsored by Marshmallow. That's the only explanation. In Southern Asia, and we've got this very creative and unique ripoff of a Champions League walkout. We've got a Celtic fan who ordered a new shirt, hoping for it to be blank on the back, aka without any sort of name on it. Instead, they gave him a shirt that read blank on the back of it, where the name should be. And finally, we've got an Ecuadorian footballer, a youngster at Real Madrid who was fined $1,200 for kissing a football because it was in breach of hygiene rules due to corona. What, so I can't lips footballs anymore? The game is completely gone. But that is going to wrap it up for football this week and I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, then feel free to slap a like on the video and of course subscribe if you're new to the channel. You can also follow me on social media. It is at the official FNG on on Twitter and on Insta. But it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a wonderful day, enjoy yourselves, and goodbye. <laughs>